Good afternoon. I'm Peter Sarfi and I came from Budapest, Hungary. I work for a human rights NGO uh, called the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union. So that's uh, modeled after the American Civil Liberties Union. It has uh, many programs and I am the head of the drug policy program. And the um, mission of the drug policy program is to connect the world of drug control with the world of human rights. There was a special reporter of the Right to House of the United Nations who said that uh, these two systems exist in parallel universes, like there is no connection between human rights and drug control. And the mission of our organization is to connect the two. And um, today I will talk, tell you, talk about one uh, particular uh, way how to bridge the gap between human rights and drug control and video, business video advocacy. And um, we have an English website, drugreporter.net, where you can find loads of videos. Uh, and, uh, and of course, you can join us on uh, uh, Facebook or Twitter, and you can follow uh, our videos. We are filming here at the conference, too, and we already uh, posted like five videos uh, from the conference. So if you go to Facebook, our Facebook page, you can find all these videos. Um, uh, our video advocacy started in uh, 2007, actually at the International uh, Harm Reduction Conference in Warsaw, where we brought the camera and we brought it here. We brought it to Warsaw and uh, we started to make interviews with uh, participants of the conference. And uh, <coughs> that was a very basic equipment and we had very, very low knowledge about uh, how to make videos. And in uh, the summer of 2007, uh, we sent our colleague Ishpan uh, to Montreal, uh, where he attended the training of the Witness Foundation. Uh, that's an NGO based in New York that is uh, organizing trainings for NGOs to uh, train them how to use the camera and how to use uh, editing softwares and how to use videos in a, uh, in a strategic way for advocacy. And, uh, since then, our, our video program produced, uh, has produced more than 500 uh, films. And uh, a few of these videos are like one, two minutes uh, short interviews, but we also have like uh, one hour docu documentaries. Uh, and uh, of course, we use uh, online video sharing websites to uh, reach out the public with our videos. Um, and uh, all of our videos are uh, 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 cre creative common license, license. So uh, actually everybody can use the, the video stuff with, with a reference. Um, uh, and uh, we, we, we always uh, use videos at the International Harm Reduction Conference and uh, I, sh I, I just put this slide to show you one of our uh, more, how to say, controversial videos we made in the Barcelona International Harm Reduction Conference where uh, uh, <coughs> the International Harm Reduction so as Association announced that they will organize the next conference in Thailand. And it divided the harm reduction co community in Barcelona. So we were, you know, uh, interviewing people there, uh, what, what they think about uh, this location. And uh, in one day we produced the video and uh, uh, and actually it's, it's a five or 15 minutes video and then uh, uh, it, it, it just uh, really uh, highlighted this issue. Um, I, I will show you why, what, 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 uh, what functions, uh, for what functions you can use uh, videos in advocacy. So one of our first successes was uh, uh, the Silence the NGO Partner video, which we produced in 2009. And uh, the aim of this video was to mobilize people and raise awareness on, uh, on an issue. We went to the uh, Commission on Narcotic Drugs. This is a high-level UN meeting of, on drug policy in Vienna. It's an annual meeting. And uh, there is an NGO forum of this uh, Commission on Narcotic Drugs. And uh, we were with, there with my boss, Balaj, and uh, we filmed this session. And actually, we, we, we filmed a guy uh, called Frederick Polak. He's a Dutch psychiatrist. And uh, 
he posed a very simple question to best question to Mr. Antonio Maria Costa, the head of the UN Agency on Drugs and Crime. And his question was, how comes that uh, in the Netherlands, where uh, adults can buy cannabis uh, in coffee shops, the uh, prevalence of cannabis use is lower, lower than, than in neighboring countries and lower, well, much lower than in the United States. And uh, actually, Mr. Costa didn't answer the question. He didn't give a, an answer. But, uh, uh, but actually, he silenced uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Polak. And we just made a very short video about this. And, uh, and it got like uh, 100,000 views on, on YouTube uh, in a few weeks. And in the end of the video, we put a mobilizing message. We asked people uh, to send, uh, send an email to Mr. Costa and ask the same question from Mr. Costa, what Mr. Polak uh, asked at the CND. And, uh, and we even crea created a, a campaign website that was called daretoact.net. Uh, and uh, actually, Mr. Costa got hundreds of uh, emails afterwards. And, uh, uh, there was a really, really big pressure, and, and we knew that this video was circulated even in the UN uh, list serves. And uh, just a few weeks later, Mr. Costa visited the Netherlands first, and, and he visited the coffee shop first, uh, first time as a, as a UN drug uh, director. And I don't say that it was only because of our video, but uh, we got some information from the UN that it, it, it really contributed to this uh, visit, and uh, and actually. Uh, uh, even the Dutch government government uh, complained. Uh, uh, so this this video also shows that, that uh, it's very easy to to create a very powerful video message if you have a camera at the right place at the right time, and um, you can use videos to make uh, EU and UN and all governmental uh, drug policy meetings more transparent. I think transparency is a very key issue. Uh, for example, if any, any, any of you have been any UN drug meetings, then you know that it's like quite secrecy, uh, it's not very friendly to NGOs, and actually uh, most of the society have no idea what's happening inside a UN uh, meeting. And uh, if you have a video camera, then you can make these uh, this me meetings much more transparent. For example, in uh, 2010, uh, we just recorded the high-level session of the UN on uh, on drugs, and they discussed the past 10 years. You know, in 1998, the UN decided to create a drug-free world, and uh, after 10 years, they reviewed this process. But actually, as you see, it was not a very interesting discussion inside. <laughs> so it was just not, you know, to, to filming some delegates falling asleep uh, while uh, the chair of the CME was talking about how to tackle the bird trap problem. So uh, we, we, we really didn't need a uh, big editing work after this. Like, uh, I'm just saying that because you don't really need a very, very high technical knowledge to produce a, a very powerful video. Um, Videos are also good to give voice to those who are voiceless, user communities, for example. And we made several movies to uh, to to give voice to, to, to different kinds of user uh, groups from uh, various countries of the world. For example, at the Liverpool Harm Reduction Conference, we made a movie with uh, for for input, and this is a promotional video uh, for 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 the international network of people who use drugs. And uh, it's not only you know that they can tell their uh, views, but also it's this video. These videos can be used uh, as a promotional uh, materials. They can sh send it to uh, uh, donors, so you can use it in, in many ways. And uh, and uh, and we 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 we, we made <coughs> several videos for various NGOs for promotional purposes. So videos can be good for education. We know that uh, at many universities our videos are used for, uh, for at, at classes. Uh, mm -hmm. And I just show you one example, uh, our video on naloxone, take home naloxone. And, uh, and this is about the right to survive overdoses. And we filmed it also at the Liverpool Harm Reduction Conference. And this is a, this is a longer video for educational purposes. 
You can, you can also use videos to chronicle the movement, harm reduction drug user movements, uh, to document and you know, to tell the story how, how we got here. And for example, our movie video is uh, an example for this. We, we also made it in the, at the Liverpool conference. It's called the Back to the Roots of Harm Reduction. This tells the story of harm reduction because in Liverpool, the harm reduction community celebrated its uh, 20th birthday. So we were interviewing the key people you know, who participated in the birth of harm reduction. And this, this video just tells the story of harm reduction. Um, we also have uh, cooperation with uh, various national NGOs. And we help them to uh, advocate for uh, national drug policy reform. One example is Poland. Uh, two years ago, we went to Poland, uh, where uh, the parliament discussed the new uh, drug law that uh, made a uh, made a step to the right direction. Like it gave the discretion to the prosecutors not to prosecute small-scale drug offenders. And um, and actually, we, we made a video. We interviewed several people in Poland, and this video was part of a, of a national campaign. To, for, for drug policy reform, and uh, it, it also has a, had a mobilizing message. We asked people to send an email to uh, to the president of Poland to sign the bill, which which reformed <coughs> drug laws, and uh, the campaign was quite successful. It's also a good example how to use social media mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. to spread your message. The Poli our Polish partners created a Facebook page, and uh, finally it got like uh, seventy thousand uh, likes in a few weeks. So. Uh, our video has been viewed like uh, by I don't know if it was fifty thousand, I yeah, think was sixty thousand people. So uh, so this this was this was part of a bigger uh, advocacy national advocacy campaign. Um, you can also use uh, videos to document human rights abuses. You know we we are a human rights NGO, so we provide legal help for uh, vulnerable groups, and uh, sometimes we produce. Uh, uh, videos as supplementary to some legal procedures and uh, for example uh, this is an example from Hungary where the police raided the dance club and they you know strip searched the young people there and uh, uh, and we made a video you know into the, the the victims of abuse and uh, and actually uh, uh, the this was supplementary to the to the legal procedure of the initiative like we we we, we submitted an official complaint to the Independent Police uh, Complaint Commission, and uh, uh, and this video was to raise awareness of about this issue. Um, videos are good to fight abuse in the name of treatment. Uh, for example, we made a video on uh, uh, drug detention centers in Asia. As you know, uh, like 400,000 people, uh, according to estimations, who are uh, detained in these so-called rehabilitation centers in South East Asia, and uh, uh, we partnered with uh, NGOs who are campaigning against, campaigning for the closure of these camps, and we, we made a video which was also used in this uh, campaign. Uh, we went to UN and EU meetings, and we interviewed uh, EU officials and UN officials, and you know we just. Uh, get them on video saying that these scams should be closed. And uh, we could use this video uh, uh, in this campaign. Uh, and actually, in, the, in 2012, <coughs> the UN made a joint statement, and, and uh, all the UN organizations uh, called for uh, closing down these scams. And uh, you can use videos also to turn drug policy upside down. Uh, and. Uh, I, I would like to show you a very short, very short video, which uh, which shows the absurdity of the drug war. In uh, two in, in 2011, we uh, we pre we made a campaign. We created a fictional organization that's called uh, Drug Lords International, and uh, the Drug Lords International is actually advocating for the status quo, they say that this is very good for us, you know, the system, so thank you United Nations to keep drugs illegal. <laughs> so, this is one video of the campaign. I'm not ready yet, please stop. 
Стоп, сказал дебил, блин. Добрый день. My name is Igor, and I'm a businessman from Moscow. Long time ago, when me and my friends from KGB, we served our motherland in Afghanistan in early 80s. We did not expect that the lost war will bring us new wonderful business opportunity, the gathering trade. Last time I watched TV with my mother and the United Nations officials said that Russia is number one consumer of gerain in the world with an estimated two and a half million users. You know, we traffickers, we make billions of dollars from selling drugs to them. And then my mother told me, Igorochek, my dearest son, you will be infinitely grateful to the United Nations for keeping this market illegal. Otherwise, we would never buy that nice Renaissance palace in Venice last summer. Nice old woman, wise and with a good sense of humor. But the TV also said that some Western bastards trying to convince my government to introduce methadone to treat addicts with this substitute drug. And here, I absolutely agree with my ex-comrade from KGB, Gospodin Ivanov, who is, by the way, the head of Federal Anti-Narcotic Agency. And he said, no way to let methadone in this country. And he means it, otherwise, how would we buy gas for our yachts, if not selling drugs to those junkies? Thank you, United Nations. Спасибо, Объединенные Нации. Спасибо за прохибищен. This is a campaign video uh, <laughs> we prepared as a part of the Counter Coast campaign. Um, <coughs> so th there is a new campaign initiated by Transform, uh, uh, and this campaign is the uh, Counter Coast campaign, and uh, uh, and actually. Uh, uh, this campaign is raising awareness on the unintended consequences of the drug war. Um, and finally, you, you can also use videos to uh, for fundraising purposes. Uh, we we also uh, created a, a fundraising website on Global Giving. So and then we uh, posted videos asking people to fund our, our organization. So that's that's another function you can use uh, uh, videos for. Uh, we organized our first video training where we train NGO people uh, how to use the camera and how to use videos uh, in September 2012 and uh, uh, we taught uh, 1400 action and drug policy activists uh, at this Budapest training. So uh, we, will, we will have some limited number of, of video trainings in the future where we can uh, teach activists uh, uh, to use camera because our uh, philosophy is that we should not, you know, contract professional filmmakers, but the activists themselves should use the camera uh, because this is a. You know, as we think that this is a much more effective way. So this was a short introduction, and my uh, colleague Ishtan will ta tell you about talk, talk about uh, some more practical issues. Thank you. Uh -huh.